Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I have a fun project for you today. And the way it came about was actually because of the project that we were making that's shown behind me. It's the Jelly Roll placemats and the matching coasters that we came up with. And when we got them all done and we were getting ready to do our photo shoot and we set the table, I'm like, we need napkins that coordinate. And uh, we started thinking, should we go look at Pier 1 Imports? And I thought, no, let's just make our own and that way everything coordinates. So the project that we have for you today is a coordinating double-sided placemat. How to make them, how quick and easy they are, and then you know that you are projects that maybe you made a table runner or maybe you've made placemats. Now you can make the exact coordinating uh, cloth napkins, and I love that one. When I make a special meal, I really want to do it all up. I want to make it, you know, each and at every aspect of the meal I want to be special, including, of course, the table setting and the, the china I select, all of that. So this is super easy. Now, I went ahead and decided to do two different fabrics. So you really have two different options. Here, you can obviously, black is on the outside, red is on the inside, and it just has this sophisticated look. You can, of course, use the same fabric on either side, uh, or on both sides, if you don't want the double look, but I love having the option. The other thing I love about this project is it, you can do this with back quarters. We cut our two pieces of fabric to 18 inches square. And as you know, in a fat quarters, 18 by 21 to 22, anywhere in that uh, area. So this is a perfect project for fat quarters. And I think too, if you were gonna do a fun festive table, maybe in the middle of the summer, you could make each of the uh, cloth napkins be a little bit different. And I think that's to be exciting. So just wanted to throw that possible decorating idea out there. The fabrics I'll be using today are from the Poinsettia and Pine collection by Maywood Studio. This is absolutely my favorite Christmas collection this season. And we've done a lot of projects with uh, this particular fabric collection from Block of the Months to the Jelly Roll rugs and now this project as well. I'll show you a little bit later on how to fold your napkin to get that pretty look that I had. But let me just show you how easy it is to make these. As I mentioned before, you'll be cutting your two pieces of fabric to 18 by 18. If they do have any kind of folds or wrinkles, go ahead and press that out before you cut your fabric to 18 by 18. Once you have that, you'll go ahead and place the fabrics right sides together. Now you can either just go right to the sewing machine if you want, but at this point, I like to pin. I don't want anything to shift. And I'm also going to be marketing my opening uh, where I'm gonna start and stop my stitching because of course we're gonna be sewing around three sides and part of a fourth and leaving an opening to turn. So I am going to go ahead and mark my spot. I'll be using a red friction pen and my two and a half by six and a half inch ruler. And I'm just marking a spot that will remind me that I need to start and stop. And I'm gonna do a five inch opening. I'm gonna do that right across that little holly leaf so I can see it. And then I'll just use my Clover Patchwork pins to pin everything else roughly so it's not gonna be shifting while I'm sewing it together. I'll be sewing on the Bernina 770 Quilters Edition today with a quarter inch presser foot. Um, so whatever machine you might be sewing with, it's a standard quarter inch seam allowance. And what I've decided to do, because I do have two different colors of fabric here, is I've got the Black on, black on the top, the red on the bottom. So when we get do get ready to move to the sewing machine, I just want to be mindful that whatever color you have on the top of your machine, that's the color you're going to have up. I wouldn't want to be sewing with the red side up at this point because I'd put the black thread on the red fabric and I, consequently I have a red fabric in my bobbin right now. So if you are going to be doing dual color uh, cloth napkins, you might want to go ahead and do the same color of thread. It just coordinates even that much better. And of course, my thought is if you're gonna put in this effort to make a project, why not do all, take it all the way and find the coordinating thread and put the right color on the top and the proper color in the bobbin. All right, I've got this pinned together. Let's go to the machine and we're just gonna sew a quarter inch of the seam, uh, seam allowance all the way around. Just as you would suspect where you begin and end, make sure you reinforce that because as you turn that through, you don't want your stitches to come undone. So let's jump over to the sewing machine and we will go ahead and start sewing our project together. 
Let me just see here, where did I mark my opening and my ending? Here we are, down here. Stop where you believe you're about a quarter of an inch away. Pivot and continue. take that over to the table and we'll just remove our pins. One of the things I think I love so much about having cloth napkins is, uh, you know, it's not wasteful. It's, it, you get to, you're not throwing something in the trash. You're gonna use this again and again and again. And of course, it just is such a prettier table when it's a cloth napkin versus a paper napkin. Now here's our opening. Now before I actually um, turn that through, I like to clip my corners on the 45. Oh, there's another pin in there. I'm just gonna give that, you can see where the stitching is. I'm just gonna clip this. What that's gonna do is re reduce the bulk in my corners and help me be more likely to get a nice sharp point. Now be careful you don't cut too close to the stitches because that could come undone in time. Just trim that through. Now if you've ever turned anything through, you know that getting those corners just perfect and pointy on the 90 degree corner isn't always easy. I've used everything from bamboo skewers to dull scissors and everything in between to try to get those points um, kind of just so. Clover realized everyone that is involved in crafting and needs to get points turned they came out with a point-to-point uh, -point turner. And what I love about this is it not only has just a fantastic point here, but sometimes when I'm doing a project that actually has curvature, like scallops, I want to have kind of a nice curvature. And this actually is, has two functions here. So I think this tool is fabulous. If you do not already have something in your sewing room, that would be a good um, option for turning points, turning out scallops. That's a tool that I think you would absolutely love. And it's, I don't really have that many notions in my sewing room, but the ones that I do have, I want to do that. I want them to do a job. And if they can do more than one job, all the better. And we'll t I turn it through by hand initially. I think we all do that. And then when I get, like, I can't get my finger in that corner. I cannot get that to be as pointy as I want. That's my finger pushed all the way out. However, when I use this in that corner, I can now get this, that little bit extra. There we go. And we'll do that in all four corners. Fantastic. So I'm going to take that to my pressing mat, just give that a nice good press. There we go. And you, as you remember, we've got that opening and we're coming up to that side here shortly. We will go ahead and turn that open section, that five inch open section right here. I might even just press above and below it. And your goal, let me just show this so you can see that real well, is we're just going to finger press that. And if you're inclined to go in with your iron and maybe just press that down as well and flip that and do that side, that's fine, absolutely. So that's down for sure. You see that right there. And my goal is that when that's closed, you don't see a dip or a rise here. It's just a straight line. So once you have it where you want, want it, I like to go ahead and pin that because it actually is hard to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pins to the outside here so I can't miss that spot. 
Then we, we solve with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we'll go back and top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance or something less than a quarter inch. It does, don't worry, we don't normally sew with an eighth inch seam allowance, right? If we're quilters, we typically use a quarter inch seam allowance. Just want to get that uh, opening closed and cut, do a nice top stitch. And again, I'll be looking for about an eighth of an inch. If it varies a little bit more, a little bit less, I'm fine with that. Just want to go ahead and get that closed and finish that edge. How easy is that? So fun! So you can see, when we just made this in real time together here, uh, maybe a little bit of fast forwarding when I did this top stitching, but how easy is that? And it's so much fun because now you can either have the red on the outside or the black on the outside. So I want to show you how I folded it. Of course you can always do, there's a lot of ways to fold napkins, but one of the prettiest ways and one of the simplest ways is to simply fold that in half. Let's say I want the black on the outside, which I do. Then I will go ahead, and so I'm seeing black here, fold it in half and fold it in half again, and I finger press so there's like that little point right there. And it leaves a little bit of a crease. I just reach underneath and I put my finger right there. So it's kind of my, it's kind of draped around my hand. Then with my other hand, I'll grab this and I just kind of, it's like a funnel in a way. I just kind of grab that and draw my hand down, put on my napkin ring, and now you can. You can kind of adjust that till it has the look that you want. And then you can just lay that on your table next to your beautiful dinnerware. And you've now just dressed up your table, had a great time making the project. And it's a wonderful housewarming gift too. If you're ever trying to look for a gift for someone that's in a new home and you're just like, what do I give that person? This would be wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed learning something today. If you love what you heard or if you have a comment, I always love hearing from you. Um, leave me a comment and I can't wait to show you our next project. Bye.